Monday and welcome back to the squad. I'm Kabil and joining me this week is the always wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I just love how everyone waves at the same time. Uh, <laughs> we got Aaron, we Yay! got Steve, and we also got my arch nemesis, Riley, joining us. Uh, Riley is a huge name. I want to say a huge name in the troll verse of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> but he is our near and dear friend. So welcome to the show, Riley. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for applauding. Welcome, me. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, be careful. This is the way I'm going to take over the universe. I'm gonna, I applauded to have you here, and then I'm going to turn around, and I don't know where I was going with that. But <laughs> yeah, well, it's the start of my plot. It, it's an, in development. <laughs> She's going to slowly break you down little slowly, by little over yeah. this over the show. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. You can't even decorate your room. Oh! oh. <laughs> wow. It's a soft Damn. spot here, okay? I got this window. I don't know what to do with it. And I got this space. And I don't know what to do with it. Believe, so just you'll be okay. I'll you'll be okay. okay. I, I wish I had cool posters like you do in the back. That looks awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. and that's the only compliment you're getting today. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, for you guys at home, welcome to the squad. You know how it goes. Every week we throw down and talk about the topics that are on everyone's mind. And this week we're going to be talking about a few things. Um, we're going to be talking about, of course, my favorite Breath of the Wild. Uh, I always try to sneak that one in here. We're going to talk about Nintendo acquiring Next Level Games, as well as IO Interactive Um Hitman 3 VR, plus God of War Ragnarok, and it possibly being cross-gen, that's going to be interesting. So let us know your thoughts in the chat. Let your voice be heard. Also clip some funny moments. Um, just a heads up, I think we were freezing a little bit earlier. Let us know as well. We want to try to get through all these technical difficulties that sometimes Discord has. Oh, well, Discord. let's the poor Discord. Let's get started um, with you know, Riley, although sometimes we don't get along, you are our guest. <laughs> so I'll let you go first. Let's talk about next level games. Okay. So, I mean, I think everybody knows kind of what, what the deal is now. Uh, Nintendo formally announced that they're going to be acquiring next level games, which is a Vancouver studio. So uh, it's going to be their first uh, first party studio in Canada, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, that deal will go through uh, the beginning of March. So it seems like it's a pretty quick turnaround on that compared to something like Microsoft acquiring Bethesda. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think mostly I just want to open it to the table and just see what everyone thinks about something mm -hmm. like that because, like, my general read on it is, like, it was kind of a no-brainer. I think a lot of people didn't know that Nintendo was outsourcing that work already and that they didn't have, like, some sort of ownership uh, in, in the company. Mm -hmm. so a lot of people are like oh okay well that's fine but i i i personally think it's like a much larger deal yeah. uh because potentially it could have gone very wrong for nintendo if they didn't step up and buy it because this company right. was looking to sell regardless and this is the company that's behind luigi's mansion um yeah. just for everyone's reference mm -hmm. as canadians okay. the four canadians on the podcast we are very proud of the studio because they're out in Vancouver. Um, yeah. So this is like a really huge deal, I think, for the Canadian uh, game industry. But also Nintendo, I feel like this is a very long time since they acquired a studio. Am I right? Yeah, I think the last time was Monolith Soft, and that was in like two. Th I'm I'm, I'm going to misspeak, but I think 2007. Mm -hmm. That sounds wow. right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's about right. And it's, so it's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a hot minute. Yeah. And Nintendo is very protective over their IPs, which is why the relationship um, with Next Level was so special, um, mm -hmm. because that's like, you know, their second poster boy uh, that they give the, you know, the freedom for that studio. But do we think that this possibly could be a trend for Nintendo going forward? Like, I know we usually leave them out of the quote unquote console wars, right. um, but is this a sign that Nintendo may be like, okay, we're interested in some of these indie studios. We're going to start acquiring them. Um, I think I think that this was more just like a purchase of like in the moment, like next level games owners were looking to sell. Nintendo saw that they had more to lose in letting someone acquire that studio mm -hmm. uh, that didn't have Nintendo's interest in mind. So, I mean, you see Luigi's Mansion 3, for example, I think that sold over 8 million units. 
So if you let that developer go, that I you have to find like just the process for trying to find like a new outlet or means of developing that franchise is gone. Yeah. And you have this massive IP that has no one to develop it. So one, that's a major concern. Two, uh, they had also worked on other games like Mario Strikers, which is a really right. fun, like the soccer game, and uh, also Punch Out. So there's like a long standing partnership between it. So they kind of realized that if if they let this go, they could have ended up with another rare situation, mm. which is what happened back in the early 2000s yeah. when Microsoft acquired the studio and they lost a developer for a, a bunch of their IPs, namely Donkey Kong. Uh, and also the rights to several major characters that they've now had to re reacquire or relicense for like Smash Brothers, like Banjo Kazooie. Right. So I think that, I think it just kind of benefited them uh, to make this decision. It was it was almost a no brainer at that point. They had more to lose. Right. I, Ninte- Nintendo always just marches to the beat of their own drum. I yeah. I don't see this being like the first iteration of them just going out and buying a whole bunch of studios like we were seeing with. Microsoft mostly, but then also to a lesser extent, PlayStation. Mm. Um, but I, I agree with Riley. Like, it's just uh, to me at least, it seems like the stars just aligned in a way that they thought, hey, they not only uh, created a really successful Switch game, but also Luigi's Mansion, uh, Dark Dark Moon on, on the, the 3DS. 3D, yeah, on yeah. the 3DS, which was a very successful game in its right as well. So you already have this established studio working on an established franchise why let yeah. them go mm-hmm. yeah i look at it very similarly to the situation with insomniac and mm-hmm. uh and, and sony where it was like they made the first spider-man game not as a first party studio right. it was like that outsourced work um and yeah in that situation like sony pretty much had to acquire that studio like spider-man as a franchise and as a game sold just a crap ton for sony you know, and so like, there's no way, first of all, that they didn't want to make like 15 Spider-Man games right after that, yeah. but also that Sony didn't want to immediately make sure that Insomniac was not going anywhere because Insomniac has, you know, they've they've worked with Microsoft exclusively before, and and they, they've done a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, so now that they're a first-party studio, you know, all these Spider-Man games are pretty much guaranteed they're not going anywhere, uh, and of course, Insomniac and themselves as a studio not going anywhere. So it makes sense just in this context as well that having the studio having made Luigi's Mansion and hearing that it sold 8 million copies um <laughs> they, like you it would be like crazy not to want to just immediately acquire the studio i okay so <laughs> Riley, I'm kind of known on the podcast for putting on that tinfoil hat, and I'm going to put it on right now, okay? There we go. Visualize Uh, it. (laughs) Visualize it. It's there, okay? It's also tinted purple, if you're wondering. I have a big imagination. (laughs) Um, Anyways. That's lovely. That's lovely. (laughs) So, okay. Luigi's anniversary, 30th anniversary was 2013, Mm -hmm. okay? Okay. We're coming upon his 40th in 2023 i'm just saying with a studio that's done so well with luigi could they be ramping up to release some really cool anniversary content like we see them do with mario we're in the anniversary of legend of zelda i think maybe this is like okay yeah they've been doing awesome it's a no-brainer but then also we're going to ramp up production because now this means that they're acquired by nintendo so we're going to be seeing more games out of them i feel um you know, on the switch. What do you guys think of that theory? Um, I don't know. Do you guys recall the year of Luigi, which was a big yep. uh, campaign that Nintendo launched in uh, mid 2010s? Yeah. Or, like, yeah. So I think that was a tremendous flop for them during the Wii U era. So I don't know if they're going <laughs> to, really I think that's console. With... That's because of the console. I know. We've you're right. And you're not wrong. I just, but I just don't games. know. I just don't know if they need to do it again. Like, I feel like they tried it once. I, not to say that I don't think that Next Level Games now has the backing to, like, in like build their team and start working on multiple projects at once because I, they absolutely do with Nintendo there. Right. And if they see, like, potential there and, like, they trust management, they might allow them to grow and do that. Mm. Um, and I think that there will always be a place for Luigi's Mansion in particular, given how well it's sold. But I, I think they also might want to try something new. And I think they also might want to bring back something like a Mario Strikers, which mm-hmm. has like international appeal. 
Yeah, and as, that's what that's what I was gonna say, say as well. Is I mean, Mario Strikers is a dormant IP at this mm-hmm. point, and you look at you know all their more sports titles like Mario Golf, tennis, all that. There still isn't that soccer representation in Mar- yeah. in Nintendo's catalog, and I think now that you're seeing Next Level brought into the fold as a first party studio, why not bring it back? They're already established in tackling that. Let's see what they can do on the Switch or in the future, another console, who knows? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Zeiser in chat says, the year of Waluigi. Make it happen. I mean, <laughs> why? Nintendo doesn't even value him enough to put him in Smash Brothers as a playable character. Oh, so no. I don't... I don't Deep I don't cuts. Buy that. I know. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I don't think they care. I... Unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, maybe maybe Waluigi, the end of Waluigi is near, but I don't think I don't see a resurgence or a year of Waluigi. Definitely uh, not. I think chat's pretty much on the same ball with uh, Riley and Steve on this one. No, uh, Hunter Slasher thirteen says no. I don't see Nintendo going on a studio spending spree. I think if it, it they would buy another studio. It will, it makes sense. It will be while a while before a purchase they purchase another studio. Nintendo is a wild card, uh, though they could do anything out of nowhere. I think mm. Nintendo is one of those companies. It's always hard to predict what they're doing because Nintendo yeah. sometimes I did I don't even think they know what they're doing. Well, no, I know they don't know <laughs> wow. what they're doing. Sometimes. Look at the Legend of Zelda timeline. Okay, they they piece uh, that together in the end. Um, but their decisions usually is the right one for the franchise. So I feel right. like if they do continue, you know, producing lots of Luigi games and focusing on that, because quite frankly, as a kid, I had to play as Luigi just because um, mm. my sister would hog player one. Um, so I want to see another year of Luigi. I want to see, you know, a resurgence of player two pride in Luigi. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping that they're planning something really big. But if not, Super Mario Strikers, you know, sure, I've never played it, but I've heard really good things about it. I think it'd be really cool um, even to see a new IP. And I feel like this is something that Nintendo sometimes does struggle with when they are like, what is a new IP that would be as successful as the plumbers, right? Uh, yeah, so right, yeah. it, it would be interesting to see that, Jacob. But I don't, I don't think we're going to see a new IP. Yeah, I mean, I, that's not to put the kibosh on future acquisitions because I think we're transitioning to an age, particular in the industry, where a lot of companies are going to put themselves up for sale mm-hmm. as a means of yep. security. Um, yep. So I think there will be those opportunities, but I, I, th- and I think Nintendo will take advantage of several of them, but. I think that's just going to be, that's just going to come as it is. Like it's going to come as it wants. So uh, over the next 10 years, I'm sure we'll see more acquisitions than we saw in the 10 years prior. But mm. uh, in terms of like IP acquisitions, that's not what they're about. They're about acquiring developers to create content based right. on their existing IP. Do you think there's any studios that make sense for Nintendo to try to acquire? Um, intelligent I mean, systems probably yeah. would be a good one. Yeah, That's intelligent right. systems. They do a lot of work with Tecmo Koi or Koi Tecmo. I, I was, <laughs> but uh, like, Tecmo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like they they do they and they do a lot of work with uh, Bandai Namco as well. So I mean, like those might make sense, but they wouldn't be for IP acquisitions. They would be primarily as developers. You have Bandai Namco working on Smash Brothers. Yeah, uh, they're also making the new Pokemon Snap. You have Tecmo Koi who just launched. Uh, Hyrule Warriors, uh, they yeah. did Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, they do all that, like a ton of those games. They made the new Fire Emblem. Mm-hmm. Uh, Intelligent Systems is a big RPG developer for it. So I mean, like those acquisitions make sense because there's like there's like a reason to acquire those teams. Uh, but they only really make sense one if there's an urgency to sell, and two if there's like a chance that what are, like their interests aren't going to align anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hunter Slasher actually brings up a, a good one. I'm ready for another Mario Golf. Maybe next level could be Camelot. Golf. That's another one they should acquire. Yeah. So Cam. Yeah, I, I feel like that's probably. I I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that this year. Really? Oh. Yeah, I feel like okay. I feel like we're due for a Mario Golf. Okay. Yeah, but, I'd be behind that. Are we due for another Mario Golf? Really? Yeah. Why not? It's okay. They're great. There's so much fun. You tell me it, you wouldn't take more Mario. I would. I think anyone would take more Mario, but it's just 
I just want another full Mario experience. Not like these little side projects and side like games. A, like an <laughs> Odyssey 2. Exactly. I, mm. I think we're long overdue for another, maybe not an Odyssey 2, just a new adventure. Yeah. Um, I think as well, because we are in a year where it's a huge anniversary for, you know, Legend of Zelda, we're going to be seeing a lot of remasters. And that's the thing with Nintendo. I love Nintendo and I, we all love playing um, older titles because we grew up with them. We love the nostalgia. Yeah. But I do want to see some new releases, some big new releases after Breath of the Wild 2. What those are, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, sure. I feel like this definitely, hopefully, we'll see if this will be the year that they start to do that. Because, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, Riley, you would have a little more knowledge on this. But I feel like with the next-gen consoles having released and a lot of the conversation being around PlayStation, Xbox, those new consoles and the games coming to them, Nintendo isn't necessarily falling behind. But maybe they do need to catch up a little bit. And like, I don't think they're releasing a new console anytime soon. But maybe they're going to start releasing some more games, uh, some more Nintendo exclusives to kind of get some people to come back and play their Switch again. Mm. Yeah, I think I think at this point there there's like maybe a sense of urgency to play a little bit of catch up, just in the sense that they still want third party support. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that becomes progressively more difficult. I mean, like Doom Eternal just launched on the Switch. It took a, it took them a year to get that port ready. Mm-hmm. Like you need to kind of break down that development time so that you're kind of at least in the running for. A potent like people might buy that game on your console right and nintendo makes profit off of that too so yeah it is beneficial especially now that hardware has taken such a leap so i'm sure they'll do something i just don't i don't know if there's an immediacy for it and if they do it it would probably launch alongside the new zelda if they were to do it yeah okay and one thing i don't want to gloss over too much is that you know with this acquisition nintendo has a really uh, stronger presence in canada now which is exciting yeah um to see like where that goes i don't know obviously next level games is gonna be able to expand and get more support from nintendo but beyond that i mean i'm just excited as a canadian to have nintendo here at in a, in like a full-fledged way that's really exciting to me absolutely yeah, yeah. it'll be really cool um to see how that goes like may, will next level games expand like because yeah. of this lots more funding will be going in and if they're going to be working on more titles you can expect that it would make sense to expand the studio um so it'll definitely have a huge presence and you know for a long term and hopefully it just expands uh on that front in terms of nintendo and canada uh i'm just gonna go to chat for a bit here just to get some feedback uh <laughs> Auntie marco says when are we getting mario hockey not <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks like there's not enough of a Canadian representation. There, <laughs> yeah, you know, fair enough. <laughs> but I think it's safe to say hockey games, unfortunately, just don't do as well as studios well, want. Them certainly to. not. No, yeah. no. Unfortunately. Yeah. And oh. come on, can you see Mario on skates? I couldn't. Doesn't have the. <laughs> <laughs> they made Mario do some crazier things, to be honest. That's true. <laughs> skates? Skates? No, not a chance. No, that's that's <laughs> where they draw the line. This <laughs> is okay. He could be in his, you know, little shorts, but skates, nah. Yeah. We're, we're drawing the line not. there. Yeah. You can play hockey against Sonic in the Sochi Olympic Games. That's like, true. That's there we go. That's true. <laughs> I wonder, does he wear skates or is he just skating on his I think it's literally just his shoes with like blades on the bottom of them. Okay, that's what they, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They're custom made for him. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Zeb Tech says, a new IP would be dope as hell, but I think Nintendo just needs to figure out how to make a new story that allows us to like the characters. Their art and ish is dope as hell, but uh, you look at arms and it just isn't memorable. The most recent successes is, is Splatoon. Yeah, yeah. Splatoon, yep. I think, has the most... And even Splatoon, okay. Splatoon has a really cool design, uh, really cool characters, very memorable because you've never really seen anything like that. And actually, no, they're memorable because they're similar to the squids in Nintendo in Mario games. Right. Um, they like pretty much like, okay, that's what we're going for, and we're going to expand on that. Um, but then even with that franchise... Who's talking about Splatoon now? Yeah, but didn't didn't Splatoon get a pretty big like esports push? It did. Or am I wrong? Huge. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's definitely what helped as well yeah. mm-hmm. with the success of that game. 
So, so do you think the core to their successes for their games is within their characters? Oh man, that's a good question. I mean, With Splatoon specifically? Uh, in general for Nintendo. Oh, yeah, the IP. Or, yeah, yeah, I think so. Franchises. Because yeah. I'm trying to think of a new title that like really captured everybody. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like that kind of applies for even like even Sony and Xbox. Like, of yeah. course, they, they run their new IPs and you have games like Ghost of Tsushima that do sell pretty well. But then you pair that up to something like The Last of Us Part Two, or, you know, like when the next God of War comes out, which I guess we'll talk about in a little bit. Like those those games just make money hand over fist in mm. comparison, mm. you know? And you look at Microsoft as well. I mean, people were clamoring for things like new fable new perfect dark there yeah. there's so much uh strength attached to not only an ip but a face so i think sure. is that a is that a problem with us as a community we just can't let go of those games that helped us grow up <laughs> probably um, yeah maybe <laughs> i think it's easier <laughs> yeah, yeah i think flawed. it's probably just easier internally to sell it up the ladder honestly yeah, yeah. Like it's just, you just know it works it's a safety mm -hmm. net yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're it's how it's right. how pretty much like every form of media can be like that nowadays. I mean, you just look at films like, uh, you know, I mean, maybe not nowadays, but right. before <laughs> <laughs> before everything, like it always was uh, it was either a sequel. It was just there was barely any original movies coming out throughout the year, you know, yeah. um, and half the time, like you'd either have to go out and look for them like actively in order to kind of know what's coming out. Uh, whereas outside of that, it's it's a sequel or an adaptation of something that already exists. like. It's just that, as as general cons what for what general consumers like is just kind of that familiar face or something that they might recognize, mm -hmm. um, and that definitely applies in games. And that's why you know we're six Halos deep, <laughs> like right? yeah. four God of War or uh, yeah, four God of War games, four Uncharted, two Last of It. Like it's just yeah. that's just how it is nowadays, you know. But I think it also goes through cycles. I mean, you brought up God of War and. For us, like a lot of us, we grew up PlayStation 2 era, learning about Kratos, attaching ourselves yeah. to Kratos and everything. Yeah. But for someone else, someone in a younger generation, they're looking at the same thing with Aloy. So that yeah. down the line, you know, there's going to be nostalgia yeah. for, you know, Horizon to come back in a new and bigger way if mm -hmm. it were to, you know, go in the back in the background. Of I actually catalog. just started playing Horizon. Oh, uh, Ooh, yeah. How are you I just, I just got on a PC. You never played really? it. I've never played. No, I know. Shame I know. on you. I've never played it. <laughs> Don't worry. I was in your position this time last week. So <laughs> okay. You know, All like right, uh, it, it was one of those games that took me a minute to finally get into it. But I know, like now it's on PC, and I just recently got mm -hmm. an upgrade with my PC. So I figured, like, let me get this. See what, see what all the hype is about. You know, got a little bit of free time, and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty sweet. It's a, it's a cool, like, interesting game. Like, I love the concept behind it. Mm -hmm. and and the whole story and what it's about like that stuff is very intriguing to me um and yeah i'm i'm, I'm going to play through it see how i like it definitely like in anticipation for the second mm -hmm. one coming this year so i i'm going to just pose like a little fun question out there it, you know going on what steve was mentioning setting up for the next generation and those characters like aloy mm -hmm. can can together we name 10 characters that we think will be that next generation's set of like i grew up with that character I hope Jin Sakai is one of them. You know, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. I want to. Sure. I want to see more of him. I'm gonna say Miles uh, Morales is, yeah. is gonna be in there. Yeah. Um, just how they set up that franchise and they're going but with think, that in terms of like other media, like into the Spider Verse as yeah. well. Yeah, I was gonna say like a big part of that too is what they're doing with the film side of things. And now there's yeah. rumors apparently that they're gonna introduce the character in live action with the new movie. And so like you know, I feel like collectively Marvel was like, all right, let's let's give this character the push. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There has to be um, someone from Fortnite. <laughs> like, yeah, I was going to say Jonesy from Fortnite. Jonesy. From Minecraft. Yeah. Like, a lot of those. Wait, uh, wait, okay. The Among Us guy. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, Never what? going away, yeah. What's Pretty the over-under? Okay, okay, I, I want to know everyone's opinion. The over-under yeah. 50% that Jonesy shows up in Smash. <sighs> oh, that, I feel like that's definitely happening. Yeah. I think yeah? so, too. It's, like, think... such a big win for Nintendo. Yeah. You, what, that were who do you think? Happen? Who do you think Fortnite gets from Nintendo into uh, into Fortnite? Samus. I think. Probably. I think it would yeah. probably be Samus if anyone. Yeah. I, yeah, I feel like that's easier. Like, I don't know how much Nintendo wants the models played with. Like, because mm. like Fox McCloud would be cool, and you could like yeah. make a human size. But I don't know if they really want that. Yeah. 
Just yeah. a jacked oh. out fox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just buff. Yeah. Chad Fox. Is that <laughs> 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 i'd be oh down for that oh my oh, god no. that, that's so good uh in chat zeb tech says i grew up with tracer and steve a uh, jonesy mm. yeah uh, mm. <laughs> luigi yeah <laughs> oh, mario and fortnite zeb tech says Andy marco says luigi and fortnite to kick off the year of luigi no please no never I don't Never. think I want to see either Mario or Luigi with a gun. <laughs> Never. I don't know if I don't that's think the Nintendo image. Does yeah, Nintendo, I don't think we'll ever <laughs> do that. The whole of banana. Maybe yeah. it'll be a banana shooter, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. But I don't think Kong. There you go. Yeah. I, I do a, see them maybe bring in Samus into Fortnite and then, yeah, like probably they'll probably end up doing something like Jonesy and. Uh, oh, and sorry, Smash. Macro. I've been saying Marco. Sorry, my bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see any of the Mario Brothers. I don't want to see any of the core Nintendo characters. It would have to be uh, Samus. <laughs> let, let Samus go there. Samus works, tell them, yeah. give us a new Metroid. Do whatever you want with Samus. Yeah. Put her in another game. I, you know, yeah. I, I, unless we're getting that new Metroid. Um, yeah. But chat, let us know which characters you grew up with, which characters you think are going to be the next generation of nostalgia trips. Mm. Um, that, that's a really interesting one. I wonder if we're going to be able to add to our list by the end of the podcast.